Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at AQA A-level chemistry and we're going to be doing amines. So by the end of this lesson you should be able to do the following. Apply IUPAC rules for naming amines. Recall and draw the mechanisms for the formation of primary, secondary, tertiary amines and quaternary ammonium salts. Explain how amines act as surfactants. Recall the conditions to form an amine from nitriles. Recall the conditions to form aromatic amines and explain the basicity of the amines. Much like when we've looked at the alcohol groups, we have different types of amines depending on the number of R groups attached to the central nitrogen. The first type then, primary amines, has got the one alkyl group attached. Secondary amine has got two alkyl groups attached. The tertiary amine has got three alkyl groups attached. And then the final type, the quaternary ammonium salt, has got four alkyl groups. And imper importantly, it's quaternary and it's an ammonium salt now, and therefore it has a positive charge. Often a starting point for these amines is from the basis here of NH3, which is ammonia. Now let's have a look at naming these amines. If they're simple primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary amines, they're going to have the suffix amine. If they're with other groups, such as carboxylic acids, then we may use the prefix amino. We're simply going to look at the amines on their own in this example, and so we're going to concentrate on the suffix the amine. We carry on as we would previously. We look at the side group. We've got three carbons, so this is propyl. Amine. Now, if we've got two side groups which are both the same length, two carbons in length, we now have ethyl amine. And because we've got two of them, we have diethyl amine. You might be able to guess that we're now moving on to three. Here we've got methyl amines, and we've got three of them, so it's now tri. And our fourth example is slightly different because we now have the ammonium salt, so we are now ammonium. We are methyl. And we have in this case four of them, so we're tetramethyl ammonium, and they'll then normally be a balancing iron, a negative iron. In this case, let's assume it's a chloride, so we'll say it's tetramethyl ammonium chloride. What about if we've got different lengths of carbon chain? For example, here we've got a secondary amine. So this time, we just name both of the side chains. We do so alphabetically. So we're now methyl propyl amine. We're now going to have a quick look at the uses of amines. And importantly, they're often used in things like surfactants. So that's a surface acting agent. And they work if we produce an amine which is dissolved into water. It will generally form the ammonium ion. And then we can have here a carbon chain, which I'm showing by the zigzag line. Now what this gives is a molecule 
which has two very different ends. There is the charged end here, which is going to be hydrophilic, that is water loving. And we have the other end here, which becomes hydrophobic, which doesn't like the water. The other important thing is this hydrophobic end will embed into oil droplets because it will interact with the oil end and the hydrophilic end will interact with water. What this means is we end up forming spheres around oil droplets and we can see in our diagram here an oil droplet, droplet in the middle which has got the hydrocarbon ends embedded into them. There is then the hydrophilic amine end sticking into the water and this will make a sphere around the oil droplet which is able to form an emulsion and therefore appears to dissolve and that will also lift it off the plate and act as a, essentially a detergent. In the last year's module then we looked at the nucleophilic substitution reaction to make amines and we just looked at primary amines and we had a nucleophile which had a lone pair of electrons on the amine attacking a halo alkane. The availability of the lone pair determines how strong a nucleophile the ammonia is. So the more available the lone pair, the better or stronger the nucleophile. So I'll quickly go through the mechanism. The lone pair attacks the delta positive carbon. The chlorine comes away. There is then a positive nitrogen compound because it has an extra hydrogen. The second ammonia will remove a hydrogen and donate its electrons back onto the positive nitrogen leaving the amine at the end. Now at the end of this process we now have a primary amine and this amine has a electron donating species the R group then has a positive inductive effect and donates electrons down the bond essentially to the nitrogen and this results in the lone pair on the nitrogen now being more available and a better nucleophile and therefore this can subsequently donate its electrons to another halo compound in the same fashion. So this time then, we would then have this lone pair of electrons would be more available and a better nucleophile. So we would donate and do the nucleophilic substitution. We would end up again with the nitrogen group, perhaps ammonia, removing the hydrogen. And our product then would be a secondary amine and this time our lone pair would be again even more available to react. So our secondary amine now would be even more able to attack the haloalkane donating. We would then end up with our hydrogen being removed again and our product this time would be a tertiary amine which again now has got the most amount of uh, electron donation induction effect towards the nitrogen making the carbon uh, the lone pair of electrons even more available and the tertiary amine would again react with the haloalkane removing the 
chlorine in this case, and we would end up here with a quaternary ammonium salt because there's no more hydrogens that can be extracted. It is possible to therefore make from ammonia and the haloalkane to decide which amine you wish to make. If you use excess ammonia in the first step, then there is not enough haloalkane to react with, and we stop at the primary alkane. However, if we use an excess of the haloalkane, the reaction continues all the way through to the quaternary ammonium salt. If we ratio in between those two values, then it's possible to stop at either the secondary or the tertiary amine. We're now briefly going to look at two other ways of making amines. The first here is to make an amine from the nitrile group. We do this by completing a reduction reaction and reducing the nitrile by somehow adding hydrogen ions. It's possible to do this in the lab by adding lithium aluminium hydride and dilute acid such as moderately concentrated hydrochloric acid or more commonly in industry we tend to use uh, a nitrile reaction let's pretend we're doing ethane nitrile again where we use pass hydrogen over a hot nickel catalyst so we have a nickel catalyst and high temperature doing exactly the same job here to form the amine group in the similar reaction so they're adding two hydrogens per nitrile molecule This high temperature, high pressure industrial use is called catalytic hydrogenation because you're adding hydrogen, hydrogenation. The other way that we can make an amine is we can make uh, phenyl amines, that is an amine group which is attached to one of these things called a benzene molecule and we'll see benzene in another video and importantly we can make this from nitrobenzene this is helpful because we can make nitrobenzene from benzene and we can do a nitrogenation reaction with a nitronium ion it's an electrophilic substitution and again we can reduce the nitro group using some source of hydrogen and in this we use tin and concentrated hydrochloric acid and then sodium hydroxide to work up important we add 6h to show the reduction and we form two waters and two hydrogens so note we have six hydrogens two of them end up on the nitrogen group and the other four here join the two oxygens that are lost from the nitrogen. Finally, then we're going to look at the basicity of amines and how they change depending on whether they're primary, secondary, tertiary or quaternary ammonium salts and so on. First thing to note is that it's a basic um, substance because the lone pair of electrons is able to donate itself to the hydrogen ions. This also means it can act as a nucleophile, which is why we've seen the nucleophilic substitution reactions. And also you can see in this other video, the nucleophilic addition elimination reactions. The availability of that lone pair allowed to act as a nucleophile, and also in this case, to accept a proton and therefore act as a base, as we can see here. The nitrogen's ability to donate this lone pair of electrons, though, 
changes depending on those groups surrounding that nitrogen atom. We've got three examples here. We've got a phenyl benzene, number one. We've got ammonia with no R groups. And we've got a primary amine with one R group. We could also look at secondary and tertiary. The sort of brown area is supposed to indicate electron density. And we can see it shifting as we go around. Now, the ability to donate an electron is going to decide how well it's going to accept a proton and therefore how basic or how strong the base is. The better it donates or the more freely available the lone pair of electrons the better or the stronger the base. Now if we have a look at our three options here, the benzene ring here, this lone pair of electrons is actually delocalized. So the electrons are delocalized into the benzene ring. And what this means is the electrons are less available to donate and become a base. In ammonia here, they are available and there's not much difference. And then as we come to this primary amine, we've got an inductive effect of the electrons from the the R group, and so the electrons are more freely available to be donated. And what this means is our phenylamine at this end is the weakest base because the lone pair are least available, while our strongest base in this instance is the primary amine because the lone pair is more available. This would actually go on, and if we had a secondary amine, this would be, again, more basic than the primary, and a tertiary would be more basic than the secondary. The quaternary ammonium salt is not basic at all, because it's no longer got a lone pair of electrons. Also, a final thing to note here, is that this nitrogen group has to be directly attached to the benzene ring. If there is a carbon between the nitrogen and the benzene ring, then we no longer observe the delocalization of this lone pair of electrons into the ring. And therefore, if there's a carbon in there, it becomes like the primary amine. So just to recap then, you should now be able to apply IUPAC rules for naming amines, recall and draw the mechanism for the formation of primary, secondary, tertiary amines and quaternary ammonium salts, explain how amines act as surfactants, recall the conditions to form an amine from nitriles, recall the conditions to form aromatic amines and explain basicity of the amines. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.